Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be looking at three quick art journal layouts in my new Dina Wakely 6x6 inch journal. So the first uh, page that we're going to see is going to be in full time and the second two are just really really quick um, time lapse videos that won't take very long. To, they're very simple so you can follow along in the short time you've got it. So the, this page is all playing with the de-stress um, oxide sprays and I'm just playing around with them. They're still a fairly new product to me so I was just playing around with different applications of it. Now um, I've just applied these straight to the journal without any gesso on it and I'm really glad I did because I, I noticed in some other pages that I've done, adding gesso to it does change the nature of the ink. So this is just being straight straight on. The great thing about this journal in particular is because the pages are so heavy that there's no bleed through to the other pages and I wasn't worried about that at all. And you can see there you get a beautiful saturation of colour in the bleed through by being really um, generous with how much I'm applying. So I'm just going in now with my heat tool and drying it. Now, personally, I really love that first application where it's really bright. It does dull down when you um, dry it off. That's the nature of the ink itself. It's got those sort of different spots in it. So I've just dropped on some water because it is water reactive and you get sort of these bleached out marks by putting the water on, which I quite like. And I just used the paper towel to um, blot those off. Now this step you don't have to do but I knew that I wanted to add some stuff over the top particularly I wanted to glue some things down on it so what I'm adding is some micro glazed um, wax. Now um, Ranger sells a version of this, mine is an old version from another company but it's all exactly the same. You just use your blender tool and rub it in and basically what it does is seals the paper so that nothing will go through it. Um, and it also um, makes the ink not water reactive anymore. So you have to make sure if you do want to do anything to it like splatting on the water that you do that before you put the wax over the top. Um, if you don't have access to the wax um, you can certainly skip that stage. Just be really careful when you're gluing things down that it's not too wet and certainly that you maybe when I glue down collage materials in the past or on different paper, sorry, um, I tend to put a layer of uh, gel medium over the top as well. If I do that and it's not sealed on this page, uh, the ink would spread. So just be aware of that. So I'm just using the Dina Wakely collage uh, tissues. This is from her first set and just cutting out the hearts. I thought I could do a bit of um, collage over the top with the hearts. And I really liked this technique. Now I when I got the sprays, I also treated myself to the new um, Tim Holtz range of the archival inks. And funnily enough, <laughs> they all match. So um, it was just really serendipitous that all the colours are in the um, archival ink range. And I was able to do this sort of shadow stamping in the background. Now it's quite subtle and some of them comes up really well on the purple because it is a slightly darker shade of purple um, but you just get this nice texture in the background and because uh, this is permanent ink it's an oil-based ink it will stamp over that micro glaze now the micro glaze is a really really thin layer and it's worked into the paper so it's really not um, impacting on the stamping very much if you put on quite a thick layer you may find an issue with it but because I'm using the archival inks it's it's working quite well because I really liked that effect I decided to go in with this more solid height stamp as well just to give a little bit more depth to the background and a little bit more texture I'm also sort of overlapping some of the colors a little bit more so I used some oranges over the yellow I've used some of the purple over the blue just so you can actually sort of see that there's something happening in the background a little bit more because as it dried, it did sort of fade down. You can still see it, but um, it wasn't quite as bold as when I first did it. So I was playing around with these collage bits and pieces where I torn them out, but they were a little bit too bold and I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. So I went to my Dina Wakely stamp set and I found this um, 
group of girls. Now I really should have got my uh, block out to stamp that. You can see it's not a perfect impression. But I don't particularly mind because it is a sort of scribbly, scratchy type stamp. So I'm using a um, brush ink marker just to sort of fill in all those gaps, which I quite like. Um, this isn't actually a true black. It's more a dark grey colour. I think if I'd used a true black on it, it may have looked too dark, uh, but it also may have worked a little bit better. I'm, I wasn't 100% sure. So I, I go back and try and rectify the stamped image at the end. So I'm just playing now around with the collage tissues and working out my placement, what I would like to do. Um, and this took a little while for me. I really wasn't sold on what I wanted to do on this page and it was a lot of sort of fiddling around. So I decided the black was just too stark on this page and it covered up too much of that beautiful background that I had. So I just leave, left a thin border around and then um, had most of the tissue in the background. So I'm just playing around with placement, making sure I'm happy with it. I do tend to work when I'm doing collage clusters or embellishments in um, odd numbers. I tend to find that works a little bit better. Now you can see there I'm able to apply the uh, gel medium onto the page directly and paint over the top and I'm not getting any bleed through. If I hadn't sealed that page you would see the colour shifting so just be aware if you don't have any um, microglaze wax to seal the page um, you just need to apply your collage papers in a slightly different way or just be a little bit more careful with how you do it. One thing I do really like about putting collage tissues over the Distress Oxide sprays though is because um, it is water reactive um, it will slightly stain the background of the paper so it actually blends your collage tissue into the background a little bit more than if it was just um, stuck onto a plain page or acrylic ink. So with the background just to sort of tie it all together I've just got in with that height stamp again with the black and some uh, text because I really struggle to have a page in my journal without some sort of text in it. So I was thinking I was finished uh, but that image was still kind of bugging me so I thought I'd get out my black paint and I would use paint as my ink instead. So I, I used my brayer to ink up my stamp and probably using a stamp press would have been a really good idea for this. I just decided to go for it. You can see I've got a little bit of a double image but it worked out okay in the end. I'm just rolling off the excess ink or paint, sorry, into my journal. And that will be a page that a video will be coming up with soon um, with the cathedral windows. So you will see that on my page in a short while. The last thing I did was finished off this page with one of the uh, small chat, small, um, small talk stickers from Tim Holtz Ideology and I'm just sticking it down with some Connect glue uh, because the paint was slightly wet the adhesive didn't really uh, stick to it. So while I'm waiting that down, waiting for it to dry, I'm just going in and cleaning off my glass mat. I just used some hand sanitizer on it which is a fantastic way to clean off your and a cheap way to clean off your glass mat. It lifts anything, acrylic paint, alcohol inks, anything you've got on your mat you just put a bit, bit of hand sanitizer on it, you can clean it off really easily. I then added some Posca paint pen around my quote just to tie in some of those bright colours again and to finish off my quote. So that was the paint, oh sorry, and putting in the whites of the eyes which I always like to do on stamped images. It just makes them look a little bit more finished and draws the viewer's eyes to the eye. I'm also using my white Posca paint pen, the thin one, just to draw over the um, face to, uh, the hair, sorry, to re recreate that scribbly line. So this is a close-up of the page that I ended up doing. So start each day with a grateful heart. Now this is a super sped up version. The reason I put these two versions in sped up is because I've got full versions of these on my um, channel or they will be coming up shortly in the future. So this page I'm using... Uh, the Brusho uh, Colour Burst powders, watercolour powders, 
um, which uh, a watercolour powder, when you activate it, it just comes up with this really vibrant um, colour straight away. The texture paste I've got in the background, I did add gesso into to make it pure white. If you don't do that, the colour will seep through and you will get it coloured from the um, watercolour paints. Paints, sorry. This page I've just gessoed down and then I've put some collage paper over the top and now I'm just stenciling using the Dina Wakely paints in the greens and blues. Stamping over with some Dina Wakely stamps. This is for the Love of Circle set. Using my acrylic inks to stamp onto another piece of paper with the figure and now using the Tim Holtz foam stamps to stamp out my quote and just doing a bit of shadowing around it. Again, a really simple page. I think it only took me about 10-15 minutes and most of that was actually doing the alphabet on, on the quote. So I hope you really enjoyed this and have a go at doing some of these journal pages yourself. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye for now.